Uh, today we've come to Lateral Age purely because, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably one of the best stalking waters in the UK. Uh, the water clarity, as you can see today, is, is just unrivaled, really. Um, and with an average of sort of ten and a half pounds, you know, you've got a good chance of catching that double-figured fish. My specific technique is, is to stalk the fish, so so pick out an individual fish, and, and the majority of the time it will be over that ten pound mark. It is literally a case of wandering around, spending 90% of the day actually wandering around, uh, looking under trees, under any obstacles in the water, um, looking close in, uh, and actually right out in the middle of the lake you can still stalk fish out at a distance. It's a very satisfying technique to, to be able to sort of pick out an individual fish and uh, basically walk away with that fish. The, the, the tackle we'll be using today is, is a nine foot full weight uh, mid flex rod. Uh, it just absorbs that extra uh, lunges of the fish. Today with the conditions as they are, the fish are going to stay low. I prefer the mid flex. It gives a, a little softer action. Basically after the rod reel and line, they are the most important part of, of your day's fishing to be able to uh, see into the water. Um, these I, I, I wouldn't be without them. Um, you know, you're, you're blind fishing without a decent set of Polaroids, so it's worth investing in the best pair that you can afford. Um, these are the, the Costa 580s and uh, as far as Polaroids go. I highly rate them. Uh, so today we're just basically going to, to start off the day, just have a wander around, um, fairly slow wander around the lake, just to, to locate fish, find out where they're going to be. Uh, you can always go back to them. Um, but a nice, slow, steady walk around the lake will often, you know, you'd be surprised how many fish you can see. Use the trees, use bushes, any obstacles to to camouflage yourself, um, try and keep a, away from the edge of the lake as much as possible. Um, but just, just walking slowly is, is a huge difference. Um, you're not spooking fish by stamping up and down the bank. Really. Um, so I think uh, the conditions are looking good and uh, I'm pretty confident today that we're actually gonna, gonna go and get a big fish. What's, what sort of size would you be happy with? Any fish is a good fish, but I think today we're, we're going to target over 15 pounds. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly guaranteed a 10 plus, but I think uh, today I, we, we will be looking at that 15 plus, uh, and several of them, hopefully. Brilliant, let's get started. With the conditions as they are, we've got an overcast day, it, it's very cold, um, so the fish are going to be a lot further down than normal. Um, so you, you're looking at the, the heavy stalking bugs. Um, it could only be sort of 10 to 15 wraps of lead around a hook, a tiny bit of uh, deer hair or marabou on the tail. Um, to then go from that up to blue flash damsels. Um, it, it's working out on the specific day. Um, every day is different, so one minute it could be the smaller flies and the next minute it could be the, the larger cat's whiskers, damsels. Um, so it is a case of a couple of casts to find out exactly what they're going to take on a daily basis. You, you have to look at that fish, what speed it's travelling at, uh, how far down in the water column it is, so then I can judge how far in front of the fish to put that fly. If it's high in the water and it's travelling quite quick, you need to be six to eight feet in front of it, minimum, so as not to spook the fish, um, but make sure it's in its path by the time it reaches that fly. A lot of that comes with experience. I think it's very easy to misjudge the depth of a fish, but also you, you can take fish on the drop, uh, so when the fly is dropping down, or if, if a specific fish has got a pattern it's going in it has, as a route, then you can drop the fly in and wait for it to come along and lift the fly up in front of the fish so you're not scaring it by casting. That's always a very good technique. Um, but individual fish have their own individual characteristics on how they want to take a fly.
never get tired of watching big fish. Especially fish of this size, especially here at Latchland. They're stunning fish. I think you've just got a slightly different approach. Yeah, you know, technically I'm using a very light rod, but your six and seven weight, nine foot, nine foot six rods, absolutely fine. Um, you just approach it in just a slightly different angle rather than standing in one spot and, and casting into the distance. Just be aware of your surroundings. You know, look out in the margins um, and, and, you know, just, Really just take care of what you're casting at. You know, if, if, if you've never had a double-figured fish, um, somewhere like this, you, know, you, you can wander around and you, you can locate that fish. Um, it, it just gives you that flexibility. You know, pack light, don't carry bags, just land in that rod, jacket with the flies in, and that's it, just keep mobile. vegetation but perfect fish and how big do you think he is Mark? Uh, about 18 pound I think I, I would be highly surprised if it's if it's less than that it, it's got quite a, a width to this fish so see the width that, that's their body mass is, is in the width of the fish rather than the length on these browns the, the depth just phenomenal and on the full weight rod let's see what this one weighs in it it's a stunning fish it is you can't ask for better yeah to come out on a, on a very overcast day to so I get something like this. Do you think it's going to be about 18? I, I reckon about 18. Oh, oh look at that. Abs so what's it like not catching a 20 pound trout? I, I can live with that. Yeah, that, that's, that's near enough.
to, to pick out an individual fish is and then to land it you know and to, to have this end result it, it's just so satisfying um, it, to, to actually find a fish follow it try and put that fly in exactly the right place for that that fish to take um, and then to get that take is just something else what more could you ask for pretty fish aren't they they're, they're stunning um, yeah I, I, I look at a lot of these throughout a year and I never tire because the patterns will always be different every individual fish um, has its own markings um, You'll, you'll have some with black spots like this one, others will have vivid red. Um, and, and they are just perfect fish, yeah. That size fish in the UK. Doesn't get any better than that. If you can't see the fish, then keep the fly out of the water. Um, yeah. if, if you're aiming for double-figured fish, um, you're, you're only casting when you see a double-figured fish. Yeah, you can see them out there. Yeah. They're a long way out. Um, yeah, I mean, if I was here without you, I'd be casting out there because I can see about eight. Yeah. What look big fish, but you're the, right. The trouble is you're never going to uh, target an individual with a group of that size in that small an area. And that, that's incredibly accurate casting for a start. Um, yeah. And you will get the smaller fish tend to sit underneath these bigger fish and they will come up. And uh, you see there's a, there's a huge brown on the far bank. There's, there's a rainbow going to your right and there's this massive brown going to your left. He's directly in front of you now. How on the far back, right, right on the far floor. bank. Uh, she's actually coming t c towards us now, so just just... Just keep the rod ready. Just in front of us, right on the bottom, there's two fish. So if you drop the fly out, that's it. In fact, one's coming across. And you see this one in front now. Drop the fly in front of that one. It's moving quite away. Right. Watch, watch the fly drop, watch it drop, watch it drop. She's going across, and it's taken. Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> you can watch that little tiny flash of the yeah, white mouth. Yes, I haven't seen it for ages. It's out in the middle of the lake. <laughs> we'll have to run onto backing shortly. I've never known anything like this. I've never. Seriously, look how far away it is. On the back in, mate. Be careful, be careful, yeah. be careful. Keep, keep your palm flat. I think I've caught a marlin. <laughs> My wrist is aching. Literally, every opportunity you get to get line in, get line in. But then. This must be what it's like catching a salmon. The 20 pound rainbows will do that. Oh, that was amazing. I saw it move for it and then it opened its mouth and you just saw a bit of, yeah, you, a bit of white to the inside. Exactly that. And that's why the Polaroids are so key to... Gee, you wouldn't have seen, I wouldn't have seen any of them. Without them you won't. You see, you can feel every movement of that head. Unbelievable, yeah. And these lighter rods.
Welcome, that was awesome. I've never pulled a fly away from a fish before in preference of going for something slightly bigger. And then when we did, I saw it I saw it turn, like you said, and then it a flash of white as it opened as it its opened, mouth. Yep. Yep. And then bang, lifted the rod in it. Look at that. Amazing. It's very much that visual fishing. Very visual and um, a lot it, of fun stalking it, seeing it, casting to it. Yeah, totally different to what I've done in the past. It's, it's the adrenaline I rush. It down, it's quite heavy. Yeah, huge it, adrenaline It rush. is that adrenaline rush. It just... It, all your senses start going and... You have to uh, keep calm that you don't fluff it because you, you're so excited you might pull the fly out of its mouth. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you ever tire of knocking into a big fish? No. No, I, I, yeah, other anglers have seen me. You know, I, I physically shake. If, if I've got something that's 15 plus on the line, yeah. I, will, I will shake. And I'll be saying, sometimes even out loud, please don't go, please don't go. Yeah, um, and these glasses are a game changer, aren't they? I mean, they, I don't think they I would are, have seen yeah. any of that if no. I didn't have these on. You, you've got that ripple on the water. Yeah, you, you can see it there. And, and that, with an inferior pair of glasses, you're just not going to see that. I should feed my boys for a bit anyway. I think I need a bigger frying pan. Quite possibly. It's a real positive. Big fish coming, big fish coming. See him? There, there, there. Chuck it across. No. Left. He might turn around. He is turning around. He is turning around. Pull it, 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 lift. You got him. It's great on these lightweight runs, isn't it? You can feel absolutely every time he every, twitches yeah. his tail. Let him tire himself out. The rod's doing all the work for you. Yeah. All the pressure. It, it, you know when I said strike into it, it was just a tiny second where he opened his mouth. It wasn't a very normally they really flare the mouth open. Yeah, that was a little, wasn't but it? But that, that was more of a very gentle take. So did I do it right? That's the question. Yeah, it's, well, well, it's, it's there at the end of the day, isn't it? You've got it on the end of the line and... Uh... Very, very different though from sort of like a big fly whipping it through the water for yeah. the fish, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's the whole looking for the fish, seeing the reaction, yeah. but it turned and he actually came to the fly. Yeah. So it, it's not always a case of... Um, if, it's, if you think it's a bad cast, just leave it for a minute, because you never know, that they might come to the fly. I mean, casting on this rod, I found that quite, it's a much more of a flick. It is, uh, obviously it's a four weight rod. Um, it's not designed to be chucking a damsel, it's designed to be chucking um, a little pheasant tail nymph on the river test. Yeah. Um, so it is gonna be a lot more difficult to actually launch a, a larger fly. Um, however, you can see how it's absorbing that that fish. Yeah, yeah the lun every single lunge is absorbed by that rod. Yeah. It's got a cracking tail, and obviously she's using that to her advantage. Yeah. So it's trying to bury down to the bottom all the time. It might be a couple more minutes, but she's tiring. I can feel her slowing down. She's not. The rod's not whipping, it feels like it's whipping. It's not it's bouncing around as much, no. It's pulling, she's still pulling, but it's... Uh, oh, no, I don't know. No, they do surprise you from time to time. You'll get them nearly to the net and they go on another run. And uh, that, that tends to catch people out a little bit. 
So this is a four weight rod, got a six pound line on it. Uh, on this one at the minute we've got an eight, purely because of the, the, the browns tend to have um, a lot sharper teeth. Okay. Um, so yeah, normally you'd be looking at a six pound leader, but you know, we wanted to get some bigger browns today, so I stepped it up to the eight pound. See, so it's actually using its weight to its advantage. As far as big fish waters go, this is almost unrivaled. This is my fourth season of fishing actually, and yeah, to have fish that look like this, why, why would anyone not come here? Look at that! <laughs> oh, she's stunning. Well, Malcolm, this is an absolutely stunning fish, and I think what I like most about it is that I cast for it, and I got it. Exactly that. I know yeah. it was a. Uh, the cast was three or four feet off perhaps where it should have been. But the, the thing that they have to look at, you watch the fish turn for that fly. If you'd have pulled the fly away and recast, you may have scared that fish away. So it's always worth just to see the reaction of that fish. Yeah. And, and it worked. Well, well, it's here on the bank, <laughs> which is fantastic. That's the first time I've used such a lightweight rig. I've used a two weight for a bit of grading fishing on yeah. the Y for small fish, but that's a four weight rod catching 12, 13 pounds of, of, of mean swimming machine, isn't it? it it's, yeah, you, you can go very lightweight with these things. Um, it's a mid flex rod, so it absorbs so much of the, the fight of the fish. Um, you, you, you get more of a sensation with these, the lighter rods. Um, you've got to play the fish sensibly, obviously, but uh, you get more prolonged fight and you can feel everything, I'm, I'm sure you... Well, certainly initially, you know, when it first took them and went, yeah. every time it, it moved this tail, this stunning tail, you just felt it on the rod. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the bit that gets the adrenaline going. Yeah. Um, well, I'm totally sold on stalking big trout now, so... Um, if Fantastic. you want a buddy again in the future to come out with, you'll have to give us a shout. Not a problem at all. Well, we've had a fantastic day. What more can I say? Look at the size of this one. Down here at Letch Lake with Malcolm for fishing for monster rainbow trout and, uh, and monster brown trout. Yes. I would have liked to brown, but... Uh, that's another day. Another day. It's another, another story. day. Exactly that. Fantastic. Well, thanks to Malcolm. I've, uh, I'm, I'm uh, one of the happiest people alive at the moment, so... Uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon on Wilderness TV. Bye for now.